people are doing. So, well, this is actually the first time I'm comparing a flip phone to another flip phone. And I guess you could be a little skeptical about this comparison particularly because the Razer 40's price has dropped down by a lot. But let's face it, that wasn't the case when it launched because when the Razer 40 launched, it was exactly the same price as the Z Flip 5, at least in India. And the Razer 40 Ultra, which is now the same price as the Flip 5, used to be way more expensive. I think like 1 lakh 20, if I'm not wrong. And so, in my opinion, you know, discounts aside, the prices, the launch prices are the same. So I think comparing these two devices is actually very apt. Even though at this point, the Razer 40 coming in at 60,000 rupees, that's, uh, that's quite the steal if you ask me. But regardless, let's jump into the comparison because there are a lot of interesting differences. So in this one in particular, this is the only daylight shot that I could get with some sunlight in there. I mean, I, I was very lucky. This was just barely before sunset and I, I managed to snag it. And as you can see, the biggest difference is in the dynamic range. Essentially, the Razer 40 has way more crushed shadows. And I'm not just saying it has higher contrast, I'm saying it has genuinely crushed shadows and the highlights are blown out a good bit more. Uh, like right where the sunlight is, I would say that's precisely where you can see a lot more detail on the Z Flip 5. Well, that's not the case on the Razer 40. Now, there isn't any zoom on either of these phones, so it's not really worth comparing, but I did take a 3x zoom shot and yeah, it's, it's basically identical and neither of them look particularly sharp, but they don't look particularly bad either. I mean, it's just, it is what it is. We don't get zoom with flip phones. But then heading back inside, we're gonna take most of these shots in indoors lighting and I think it can be some of the most challenging situations, usually because I just tend to go a little crazy with these shots. Like this one right here, it's completely backlit. There's barely any light on the subject except for one warm light, which also adds a whole white balance situation in the mix. But I do think that both phones are doing a fantastic job with white balance. It is actually in the detail preservation. I'm pretty sure you can see it right here. The razor just doesn't have a ton of detail, especially in the shadows on the plant. It just doesn't seem to have that, that crispiness, you know? Is it, is it crispiness or crispness? I'm not sure. But whatever the case is, you can see 500% crop and yeah, the razor definitely has way less detail preservation. Now the ultra wide camera, the only other rear camera that we have on both phones. Yeah, I, I took the I took basically the same shot as I did with the main camera because this was the only time I got with a little bit of sunlight and any other time of day, it's overcast, it's darker outside than it is indoors. But regardless, I do think that we have a similar type of problem that we had with the main camera. Essentially, the Z Flip 5 has more detail in this case, on the road especially, we have more shadow detail and the overall contrast balance, it just looks perfect on the Z Flip as opposed to the Moto not quite nailing it here. But indoors, surprisingly enough, this is most obviously a much more difficult situation. And the, the Razer is doing a relatively good job. Like it's, it's very noise free, which really just sticks out to me because I do see a good bit of noise happening on the Z Flip 5. And yes, we do get more contrast and you know slightly more crushed shadows on the motor razor but i don't think it looks particularly bad here in this case at least it's doing a really good job at this they, i think this was the most challenging shot in this comparison because not only do we have a backless situation we have a really bright warm chandelier in the background and we have pure white light falling on the subject and in the foreground like everything on the table has white light falling on it this is also the ultra -right, just in case i didn't mention before First and foremost, the Razer has impeccable white balance. The whites, as in the pure whites, which you can see on the chair, on the pebbles, it, it all looks perfect. It all looks exactly like it should when white light falls on it, while the Z Flip is cooling things off a little too much. And the noise level on the Z Flip is very, very high. I mean, we saw this issue previously as well, but in this one, it's very obvious. Now then, close-ups. Well, close-ups are interesting for me because there are two ways you can take close-ups. First is with the main camera and to be entirely honest, as much as I love a good macro mode, I do enjoy taking main camera close-ups because obviously you get incredible quality, as you can see right here, amazing detail preservation, amazing quality, and you get a metric ton of bokeh in the background. So that's, that's obviously a very nice thing. You obviously can't get as close as with macro shots. And in this case, with the main camera, the Z Flip can get a touch closer than the Razer 40. 
but the Razor 40 has a macro mode. The Z Flip 5 does not. I don't exactly know the reasoning behind it, but all I can say is with a macro mode, if you really want to take close-ups, if you really want to get up close and personal to whatever it is you're trying to shoot, well, the, the Razer is going to come out on top, plain and simple, with a good macro mode. And that's not all. It also has a 64 megapixel high res mode. We don't get any high res options on the Z Flip 5, which is interesting. I guess it doesn't really matter all that much, but with the Razer coming in with the 64 megapixels, now that makes it quite interesting. Because as you would expect, with good enough lighting. I mean, this was indoors, not even like proper daylight, where ideally you'd want to shoot high res. I still think that the Razer is doing a tremendous job. The Z Flip is close. Should be told, it is doing a really good job in keeping up with the general detail preservation and the software sharpening is there. And I say that with a caveat because the sharpening is really there. I mean, it's pumping up the details a lot, but it's also very obviously looking sharpened. Now, of course, the trend up until now is that the Razer is overall really good. It has what I would consider a really good ultrawide camera. It has very noise-free ultrawide shots and the high-res works out quite well, in my opinion. Not to mention the macro mode, which to some people might even be a deal breaker. But I think the one thing that could also be a potential deal breaker are the selfies. The Z Flip 5, as far as I've seen, is potentially the world's best selfie photography device that you can buy right now. For a very, very simple reason. The Z Flip 5 can use its rear cameras for very easy selfies. And by easy, uh, there's a very good reason I say that. I'll get into it a little bit later. In this case, we're using the you know, technical selfie cameras, but you really shouldn't be using them. And to be honest, even with the selfie camera, the Z Flip is taking a lead because uh, Razer, again, with its selfie camera, it, it seems to be having issues with dynamic range here. Now, the problem with the Razer is that it, it has an outside display. It's a very small outside display, but the software doesn't allow us to have a small viewfinder on the outside. That means you cannot frame up selfies. It would be very difficult to frame up selfies even if we had a viewfinder because the Razer 40 screen is really that small. But even then, if we had one, at least I would just say that, yeah, you're getting good results on both, but it is significantly easier on the Z Flip 5 to take good selfies because the screen is so much larger. That would be my conclusion had we had rear camera selfie capabilities on the Razer. We don't, so that just completely makes the Z Flip 5 obliterate the Razer in this department. And you can take ultra-wide selfies as well, which, let's just say, if you really like taking groupies, this is it. This is a phone for you. And a huge benefit on the Z Flip 5 is that when you fold it up, it's so compact, it is just a breeze to take any kind of selfie, whether it's ultra wide or the main camera. And coming from me, that's a huge praise because even though I don't really enjoy it, I have to take a ton of selfies, a ridiculous amount because of these comparisons, of course, not because I have an OnlyFans. But anyways, let's move on to selfie portraits. And yeah, wow, the struggle is real on the Razer 40 here. Like that's, that's not good. I cleaned the lens. Believe me, when I first shot the shot, I was like, there's no way the lens is clean. Apparently it was, and apparently this is the best we could do. I, I don't even need to tell you that the Z Flip is doing a um, monumentally better job. Even night selfies are significantly better on the Z Flip 5. And Z Flip 5 doesn't have the best night selfies. I compared it to the S23 Ultra, and in my opinion, I felt like the S23 had better night selfies in particular. Daytime and normal selfies were better on the Z Flip 5, as you would expect, because we're using the rear cameras, but night selfies, not quite as good as the S23. But that's irrelevant in this case, because the Razer obviously doesn't have nearly as much detail preservation as the Z Flip 5 here. As for night portrait selfies, also another option we get on the Z Flip 5, and with the rear cameras, I, I mean, do I need to tell you just how much better it looks? It's, it's ridiculously good. and. If you think that there was a lot of light, well, then the motor razor is your proof right there. There was very little light, and it looks impeccable on the Z Flip 5. Basically a perfect portrait selfie right there. Now then, rear camera portraits. Well, technically, we were looking at rear camera portraits on the Z Flip right now, but regardless. 
I would say in this case the razor is screwing things up a little. Not only does it have this slight amount of smoothening happening on my skin which I'm not a fan of, I turned off anything that I could turn off and the Z Flip just has better detail preservation. It's doing a far better job with controlling the saturation and the skin tones look really nice. It maintains a warmth without going overboard. That's a very fine balance and the Z Flip nails it. The only thing I like about the Moto is that it has slightly better contrast and the blacks on my t-shirt look a little bit better. Now a backlit portrait, well I mean, it wouldn't be my comparison if we didn't have a backlit portrait, right? So yeah, the razor is struggling. Now look, to be fair, there was very little light on my face and just a ludicrous amount in the background. But whatever the case, at the end of the Z Flip is doing a significantly better job. The detailed preservation on the Z Flip, that's what really gets me here. Because with such little light, it's actually doing a really, really good job in this situation. And night portraits, again, the Z Flip just takes a massive lead. Like, it's been handling human subjects so much better than the Razer 40 that any lead that the Razer had previously is basically equalized, at the very least. It's been equalized. But the night mode. Well, see, this is where things might get interesting. Let's find out. So this is with the main camera and surprisingly the Z Flip is doing a really good job here because it's not, you know, brightening things up way too much. It's maintaining perfect white balance. Like every single one of those lights, every single street light in the area was warm. So the warmth you see on the street on the Z Flip is perfect, it's accurate. Not to mention the general contrast is way higher than the Razer, so it just looks so much better to my eyes. And now this one, it doesn't look all that difficult because the phones are doing a very good job with the situation, but it was fairly challenging because all the shadows, all the leaves and the plants that you see in front, they were mostly in the shadows. And so lifting that up, giving us all that beautiful detail, Especially on the Z Flip, it's really something. I do think it's oversaturating the greens a little too much, while the Razer 40 is undersaturating it. So it's an interesting situation. I do personally prefer the Z Flip a little bit more because I do like the contrast a touch more. The oversaturation is obviously a problem. And on this one, this is significantly darker than it looks. Believe me, because <laughs> it's just so much more detail in here than even what I could see that it was quite something. Anyways, I think that overall, once again, the Z Flip does a little bit better. I do think it's again oversaturating things a little too much. Like the, the awkward, almost awkward warm color that we're getting on the leaves. Is, it obviously didn't look even close to that. And th the reason why I prefer the Z Flip in this case is because the sky looks way smoother, way more clean. Now then, the ultra wide camera, well, you know, Initially, I really expected the Razer to take a lead in the ultra wide because it took a lead in the daytime shows. It just felt like that was gonna be the natural course of things here, but that's not quite entirely the case. The Razer does have its pros, like it is managing the warmth in the scene really well. It has very accurate colors, but the Z Flip has so much more detail, less noise, especially in the sky. It's not a massive difference in the noise department at least, but the detail levels are significantly higher. I think that has something to do with the exposure time. The Z Flip had consistently higher exposures, at least with the ultra wide camera. And this ultra wide shot is like the final nail in the coffin, right? <laughs> because essentially, yes, the Z Flip has its issues, but comparatively speaking, it's not quite good on <laughs> the Razer 40. Now is it? The details are just gone. The sky looks like an oil painting done by a toddler. And well, if you look at that crane back there, the construction crane, you can actually see it properly on the Z Flip 5. It's so smudged up on the Razer 40, it looks like a UFO. So that's not a good thing, obviously. So that's a wrap for this one. Well, I guess we could say that the Razer definitely has some issues. Now, I am in general leaning towards the Flip 5. Don't get me wrong, this, the Z Flip 5 has its issues. Like the ultra wide camera, it's good, but it could be significantly better. Like, especially with the daytime shots, I think the processing needs some kind of an update or something because I do see a lot of noise happening on the Z Flip 5 from time to time. But the Razer, see that, that one had quite a few issues. Essentially, you have no selfie options with the rear cameras, which is criminal for a flip phone. And well, 
the selfie camera itself, it really doesn't stack up. I mean, it has a lot of issues. And surprisingly enough, we had a lot of issues with portraits as well, regular rear camera portraits. So, you know, if you really think about it, if we had selfies with the rear camera enabled, we would still be facing some problems, right? Because at the end of the day, if the portraits don't really work out with the rear cameras, neither are gonna be the selfies, even if you could take them. Now, look, I get it, ultra wide night mode is not something that everyone wants to use, but believe me, if you have used any phone in the past that had genuinely good ultra wide night mode, I mean, ultra wide night mode shows that looked incredible, impeccable. I have used a number of those phones and I must say, it's, it's very, very, very hard to go back. It's basically impossible to go back. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed, found this helpful, and well, in my opinion, the Z Flip 5, at this moment at least, it has a better camera. Now, the Razer's significantly lower price tag, at this moment at least, it might help compensate for that, but I don't know. What are your thoughts? Let me know. Anyways, I'll see you guys sooner with many more to come. Cheers.